It's What's Hot with Shamai Cook, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, iHeartRadio, or whatever you get your podcast. What is going on, everybody? And welcome into What's Hot with Shamai Cook. We are back, another edition of the show. Um, whether you are watching us on the Cook Entertainment YouTube page or listening to us wherever you get your podcast, like I said, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, uh, Amazon, whatever you get your podcast. We are back from uh, our little week off. We had a little mini vacation and we are glad to be back better than ever. Had some um, good rest. Um, we are going to take another break later on in a few weeks because um, I've got another project to work on. And um, yeah, so yeah, that's that's that. Uh, let's get into, you know, you know, can we, first of all, we got we got a few things to discuss. I got a few things to get off my chest today and on the show, on the podcast, whatever you're gonna call it. Um, I am very sick of my colleagues in the media, and I'm sick of people on Twitter um, criticizing female athletes on things that they would not criticize when the male athletes. When a male athlete does something, the same thing like they did that that the female athlete did, and I'm gonna get into that right now. So as we know, recently LSU, the woman, the Lady Tigers, beat defeated Iowa in uh, in a 102-85 win uh, for the women's national championship during um, uh, earlier this week. During the game, LSU star Angel Reese taunted Iowa star Caitlin Clark in the fourth quarter as the game was ending. After the game, Angel explained why she made that celebratory gesture towards Clark. Here's what she said. Take a listen. Caitlin Clark is a hell of a Incredible. player for sure. But I don't take disrespect lightly. And she disrespected Alexis. And my girls, South Carolina, they still my SEC girls too. But y'all not going to disrespect them either. So I had, I, I wanted to pick her pocket. But I, I had a moment at the end of the game. And that was just, I was in my bag. I was in my moment. Yeah. <laughs> All year, I was critiqued about who I was. Nobody, I don't, yeah, yeah, the narrative, I don't fit the narrative. I don't fit in the box that y'all want me to be in. I'm too hood, I'm too ghetto. Y'all told me that all year. But when other people do it, y'all don't say nothing. So this was for the girls that look like me, that gonna, that's gonna speak up on what they, they believe in. It's unapologetically you. And that's what I did it for tonight. This was for the more, than, it, was, it was bigger than me tonight. It was bigger than me. Twitter is gonna go in a rage every time. All right, so I, I like, okay, so you got you got the one side of the story. Now here, I like the, there's always two sides to every story. So here's what Caitlin uh, response to what um, Angel said. Take a listen. So yeah, I have no idea. I was just trying to get to the handshake line and shake hands and, you know, be grateful that my team was in that position. Um, you know, that's all you can do is, you know, hold your head high, be proud of what you did, and, you know, all the credit in the world to LSU. You know, they were tremendous. They they deserve it. Um, they had a tremendous season. Listen, I have no problem at all with with um no problem with this at all. You know, this they're they're athletes, they compete, they're 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 there to compete. It's the championship, it was a great game. I love watching this game, okay? Women's basketball needs to get more praise than it does. Period. Point blank. Period. Women's basketball needs to get more praise from from the from the collegiate level all the way to the pros. W WNBA is getting there, but it needs to come ha- happen faster because we need to treat women with respect. Female athletes with respect because they're not getting the respect that they are. And it's a prime example. I'm going to get into that. There's a little, there's a little, little tad before I make these couple of other points. Um, you know, Caitlin Clark is a phenomenal player. She got, uh, uh I think she got played. Yeah, she got player of the year. You uh, as she should have. 
She got player of the year as she should have. Point blank simple. But she's the one that started this. She's the one that instigated this situation. This behavior. She's the one. She's the one that instigated this behavior to begin with. So I don't know what's the problem here, but she's the one that instigated the behavior. She um did the John Cena you can't see me wave early in the tournament versus Louisville. Yes, she did. Uh do we have the clip you we're playing the clip right here. You play the clip right here. You see she's doing the John Cena wave George Louisville. And guess what? My colleagues in the media Twitter, they they celebrated her. Oh, she's doing it. She's showing that she she's like that. She she got praised for it. But the moment she loses Right, she didn't back up. Oh, uh, you can't see me. Oh, uh, but this wasn't the only disrespect that she did. Also, well, they call it the, the celebration, celebrating tall thing. And, and I like it. I'm not saying it's a problem, but this is not the only the only thing she waved off versus um South Carolina in the semi um semi uh. Uh, finals championship, semi championship, whatever you want to call it. She waved off Raven Johnson like um nothing. Like she was nothing. She wasn't worried about her. She waved her off. We had that clip, don't we too? Just take a look at that. She just waved her off. Look at that. Like she's nothing. Like nope, nope. She just leave her. Just wave her. Like, like she's nothing. Don't worry about her. But this is clearly, and this is why I'm very upset. My colleagues and Twitter and Instagram and social media, this is clearly a race issue. You know, I don't like to make it at all. You always put the race card. Yes, I'm pulling the race card here. Because it's plain and simple. It's night and day, literally. When Clark did it, she got praised for it. She got complimented for it. She got... Oh, no, no problem. No problem. She got celebrated. But when Angel did it, she did it and backed it up with winning the championship. See, Clark did it and did not do it and won. She didn't, she did it, but they didn't win the chip. See, you could do all that, but you got to win, back it up. See, R Reese. She backed it up. Angel, she backed it up. And like she said in the clip, and I, I compliment her. I praise her for that. She's unapologetically herself. And she should not be ashamed. She should not in the in the media, Twitter, what Instagram, social media. We need to stop. You guys need to stop. We need to stop. I'm saying we because I'm part of the media. We need to stop. Treating these female athletes like they don't act or play better. Some, most of the time, most of the time, they they probably can't compete with these male athletes. If you want to do it, they're doing the same thing these male athletes are doing. But you guys are... Trying to degrade them or trying to discredit them because in the end, if this was a between men, if this was the men's game, this would not be a story. It wouldn't have not half, but it's clearly a race thing because, like she said also in the clip, because she's tired of people saying, "Oh, she acts in too ghetto, too hood." To and actually, I compliment her. Be unapologetically yourself on the court. She backed it up. But Reese backed it up. Um, Angel Reese, she backed it up. But Clark, she didn't back it up. So she did all that for nothing. She did all that for all that John Cena mess for nothing. Even though she got player of the year, as she should. But in the end, you got player of the year. But you didn't win the chip. And you doing all the John Cena stuff. And you're disrespecting. It's a sign of disrespect too. When you're waving your opponent off like they're nothing. And and she took that per Angel, like you saw in the clip. Also, she took that personally, and I would have took that personally when you when you are doing that to other players. When you should try to embrace each other, even though you're competing against each other, embrace each other, show respect. And she disrespected it, and she showed that disrespect. And I'm tired. I'm tired when it, it's karma. 
like I said on Twitter, I tweeted it. It was Karma. Karma is a female dog. I'm not going to say the B word on, on air. But Karma is a female dog. Karma will bite you when you don't want it to. Because, like I said, she did it in Louisville earlier in the tournament. And Reese did it back to her. And she won the chip. See, it's different when you're doing this and you're winning. Yeah, she won. She won. She beat South Carolina. Big ups to her. Yes. Clark beat South Carolina. But did she beat LSU when it mattered the most? No, she gagged when it mattered the most. You gagged. You choked. You lost. Point blank simple. So I don't want to see all that. And then she tried to suffer. Like, oh, I didn't see her. I was trying to go to the the to the um the da- the the line to the dap the, everybody up. I don't buy that BS. You saw her. She was right in your face. I don't buy that BS. Be quiet. You lost. You you got your karma. But you're still you're still a phenomenal player. You're the Steph Curry of, of women's basketball. And you probably will be one of the greatest basketball players to a woman's basketball player to ever live. But in the end you lost. You lost and you, you're gagged and you did all that for nothing. See I hate when I hate when athletes, not just female athletes, all athletes in general, they took all that smack. They do all that jazz and lose when it matters the most. It's aggravating. It's disrespectful to the sport. But at the same time, this is not just about the sport. This is making it about a woman and a race issue. And the media needs to stop doing that to female athletes when they are performing at a great level. Both of these teams were excellent teams. LSU was the better team. Point blank. Simple. We'll be back. It's What's Hot with Shemai Cook. Jada's Men's Accessories is a proud sponsor of What's Hot. Jada's Men's Accessories is a black-owned haberdashery specializing in handmade bow ties, neckties, pocket squares, lapel flowers, ascots, and much more. Visit Jada's Men's Accessories at 417 Foster Street in downtown Durham, North Carolina. That's 417 Foster Street in downtown Durham, North Carolina. Jada's Men's Accessories. Your look, your style, your habitatry. We are back. Welcome back um, to What's Up with Shemai Cook. Uh, we are taping this. I want to let everybody know we are taping this Monday evening. Um, I'm telling you this because I'm about to do a story that could be um, have more details to uh, the story, to the story uh, it, as it develops. But we are taping this Monday evening, and that is as April third. We are taping this on April third, Monday evening. Uh, we usually tape um, in the beginning of the weekend, air it on Friday. But the reason I'm telling you this is. I wanted to talk about uh, our former president, President Donald, former President Donald Trump. Uh, It's being indicted by a Manhattan grand jury. Um, You know, uh, a New York grand jury recently voted uh, to indict former President Donald Trump in connection with a hush money payment to adult film actress Stormy Daniels ahead of the 2016 election. Trump is the first former U.S. president to be charged with a crime and he has denied uh, any wrongdoing. Uh, Take a listen on how Trump was surprised about this news. Take a listen. Still digesting the news down at Mar-a-Lago. Uh, they really were caught very much by surprise uh, by the fact of this happening. I can't stress that enough. Now will come the you know the delicate arrangements around 
a surrender, uh, which, you know, Trump's lawyer, Joe Tacopina, said he is going to do willingly. Um, surrender in any form is not something Donald Trump likes to do, I think, let alone this one. Um, but that is where we are, are going to go with this next. Uh, and that will, I suspect, happen in the coming days. And I think Trump will, you know, try to use the weekend to sway public opinion as much as possible. That's the, his go-to move, Wolf. It has always been his go-to move. He was trying it with what was essentially an intimidation campaign against uh, Alvin Bragg in the last two weeks. It clearly did not. I don't know uh, how he was surprised when he's the one that told us this last week or a few weeks ago that he was going to go to jail. He was going to get indicted. Um, You know, this shows that nobody is above the law, even the president of the United States, former president of the United States. This shows that no, it doesn't matter how, what, how much money you have in the bank account. Even though he lied about that, uh, doesn't matter uh, how much how much people like you, how much people don't like you. It doesn't matter how much power you have. Nobody is above the law, and this New York grand jury showed that. They showed that Donald Trump uh, broke the law. Point blank, simple. And, you know, um, he's facing over 30 charges. Um, and this is not the only case uh, he has. Um, yeah, this is not the only case he has. He has a case in Georgia. He has two or three cases with the Department of Justice. It's, um, so, and the, this case is sealed. We want to make sure that, so we don't know what the the charge the 30 charges are but we know that they are in connection with the hush money um payments to adult film actress stormy daniels now president trump um like i said we are taping this monday evening um we are telling you that he has landed in the in um new york and he is planning to Turn himself in tomorrow. Uh, to turn himself uh, expected to have um, fingerprint and a mugshot to the public. Um, this is according to multiple reports. Um, you know, you did the crime. You got to do the time. Don't matter what race you are. Don't matter how much money you have. Don't matter. Don't matter. Who you know, what you know, your degree, your doesn't matter. You wrote the law. You're gonna do the time now. Michael Cohen, who was um a attorney, a former attorney for Trump, um and a key witness in this Manhattan uh, district attorney's case, said that uh, Trump is over this indictment and that he. Uh, that um he's scared basically uh here's what he said take a listen you know or knew donald trump very well worked with them very closely for many years what's he doing tonight behind the scenes how is he handling something like this tonight he's seething and to the world he wants to again appear to have this thick skin he's not thick skinned again he's actually very thin skinned and he has a very fragile ego this is his biggest fear that he will be mugshotted and that you know he's going to now have an F, a felony, next to his name. These are not things that Donald Trump ever thought in his entire life, nor I, for that matter, that he would ever be confronted with. He's seething because all the, all the advice that they gave now landed him here. <sighs> All right. Um, as I said, we do. Um, this is previously recorded. This is just coming in. This is developing news. Uh, this is more. We're gonna keep you posted. But this show, I, I, I'm very. Uh, excuse me. Um, I'm very happy. Well, not. Yeah, I'm very relieved that our democracy is not damage because of one person this shows that there no one's above the law i'm proud of that there's nothing that no and 
I'm really, I, I'm really like, we had not seen the former first lady Melania, um, <laughs> since he, since they left office. Uh, I think because because of the her husband's nonsense, because that he's being sued, uh, and, pr- and probably gonna be be in jail. Yeah, but it's it, it, it the thing is, is that. He thought he was going to get away with this, and you see all his his uh his his supporters and former colleagues in Congress who who supported him in Congress and and the Senate and stuff crying on Fox News or or the man, his former vice president who was in danger who almost got killed because of January six. Cause his, cause it's his former boss, uh, Donald J. Trump, saying that this is a political gain for political power. Blah, blah, blah. Nah, this this district attorney in Manhattan doing your job. This grand jury. These are normal Americans, normal New Yorkers. So this, they're not Trump supporters. They're not political junkies, or whatever. They're just regular New Yorkers doing their jobs. And they did the justice system right um, for our democracy moving forward. And I can't wait to see what this story uh, goes. I- I'm watching all the coverage from MSNBC, CBS, whatever. I'm watching this, and this is. Ugh, and his lawyers are going off on media saying, oh, he was surprised. Nah, he shouldn't have to be surprised. I don't know why were you surprised when you're the one that told us. You're the one that said, went on your blog or whatever saying that you were about to turn yourself in the, like a few weeks ago. But in the end, no one's above the law. And we saw that. Thanks to our democracy. It's What's Hot with Shemika. We back. Thank you guys so so much for listening and watching. Um, if you would like to see more of our recent videos or episodes, like I said at the beginning of the show, you go uh, like and subscribe. Make sure you like and subscribe if you're watching on uh, us on on the Cook Entertainment YouTube page, or you could also su- subscribe to our other uh, channels on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Google Play, Amazon, iHeartRadio, or whatever you get your podcast. Make sure you support us so we can bring you more content. Thank you guys so much, and thank you to our sponsors. Jada's Men's Accessories, your look, your style, your haberdashery. Thank you guys so much. Have a blessed, blessed a day, night, morning, whatever time you are watching this. God bless you guys next time. The action never stops. <laughs>